during this month, we are um, introducing you to different parachurch ministries, uh, some here locally, some not. Uh, today, uh, you will be blessed. Um, you will say to me, that was the best sermon I've heard you ever preach. And uh, uh, J.T. Coughlin is here from Great Falls, been over there 25 years, working with the Set Free Ministry. How many of you, it's okay if you haven't, Never heard of the Set Free Ministry. Raise your hand. Never heard of that. Okay, yeah. Uh, that was kind of what we had in the first service. And uh, you're going to be blessed and you're going to go, man, I'm glad I came uh, to uh, church this morning. Um, sometimes we wonder how does God reach into places that no one else could get to. And uh, there are people that um, I have read testimonies that are in Hollywood and on the, on the walkway where fashion is taking place, where you and I could never get, but that's what God has called them to, that particular area of ministry. And so this morning, uh, you're going to be blessed to hear um, some amazing stories of what God's doing in people's lives uh, in the state of Montana. And the guy that really started it all, is uh, Pastor JT. So I'm going to show you a video that they put together a few years ago, and then you give him a hand as he comes up. <clears throat> they call us the biker church, but the biker part of it's just a small part of what the church actually does. I was saved in 1985 and got plugged into a good church around August of that time frame. Uh, served in that church for about five years and then and after that time I became the kids pastor. During that time I just felt a call to get out on the streets and start helping people on the street. In the process of doing that I was in a praise and worship service at our church. Uh, I was standing in the front row and going through all the turmoil of whether to go out to do and and touch people in the street and, and the, God's voice said, your feet aren't in concrete, get out and do what I told you to do. And when I turned around to see who was talking to me, there was nobody there. We started the ministry on February 5th of 1995 and uh, been going full guns ever since. When we first got here, they literally tried to get rid of us. They tried to throw us out from downtown. They held, held a town hall meeting trying to get rid of us. Uh, after that meeting, everybody's really accepted us. Now they know that we're not the bad guys, I guess is what you would look at, but that we're actually here to help the community, that uh, we're feeding, we're clothing, uh, we're helping the kids. Most of the ministry that we do around here is outreach. And it's not so much inside the four walls. Uh, the food ministry is out all the time. Uh, we do some big events. On Easter, we'll be down at the park. Uh, this year, we're gonna be stuffing 35,000 eggs. And we just have a great big Easter egg hunt down there. And we have a clothing ministry that goes on here. We have an in-house, we call it in-house discipleship program, uh, where guys come either out of prison, out of pre-release, off the street, um, a lot of our guys come from the ranch in California and come up here and serve. They're, they commit for a year. They live here, eat, work, play. Everything's right here in the ministry for a year. Uh, with that, they help in, in the clothing ministry and the food ministry, which uh, on Tuesdays and Fridays we have a, uh, a huge clothing ministry where people can come in and they can take all the clothes that they want for free. And in the process of that, there's a lot of people that donate clothes to us because they know we're not charging anybody for that. The food ministry goes literally seven days a week. We're either picking up, delivering, or giving out food seven days a week around here. Uh, tonight we'll be, before church, we'll be feeding out on the street. Um, one of our ladies around here sometimes makes uh, special dishes, spaghetti, uh, different sauces, all sorts of different things. Uh, when that's not going on, we call it a set free steak. We barbecue hot dogs out there, and, and different people bring salads and uh, chips and different things like that. And, uh, we just have just like a little barbecue picnic going on every every night before church.
one of our big things is not so much telling them about Jesus, but showing them through our lifestyle. We're praying that we're going to have a set free church in, in seven, of, seven of the major cities in Montana. Uh, we already have one in Missoula right now. We're just about getting ready to open one up in Helena. And uh, it's just mainly going out again, back to serving, just both serving people, loving on people, hanging out with people, and just getting a heart for the people on the street and a heart for people that really don't fit into church. Um, one of our sayings is, is we're not your mama's church. And uh, I think part of that is just how we look. Um, we're not all suited up and tied up. And, Everybody come just like you are, and it's, it's we're just set free. What's my time on this one? Until uh, quarter two. Okay, gotcha. Amen. Well, as you can see in that video, we were wearing some different patches. That was actually around 13 years ago. My daughter found that video the other day when Bruce asked me to send something, and she goes, Dad, you were a pup. <laughs> I didn't have any gray or anything back in those days. But we were wearing a different patch back in those days, and we had uh, one of our crew in uh, California had an altercation with uh, another crew, and uh, on the back of our hats, you see if cowboys had it, it says our sheep have teeth. And uh, I always tell everybody, our crew, our crew is saved, but we're in the process of sanctification. So if you, <laughs> if you cross us, you might get bit. So in the process of that whole thing, one of the P's of the, one of the presidents of one of the uh, clubs in the state called me over to his house. And uh, he said, hey, JT, how's your pinochle game and your crib game? I'm like, well, I play crib all the time. My I haven't played pinochle in a long time. We'll go, what are you talking about? He says, so when we're locked up together, we got to have a hustle. <laughs> and I'm looking at him like, locked up together? What are you talking about? He says, well, I'm on the top of the OMG, which is the Outlaw Motorcycle Gang website, and you're right underneath me. I said, you're lying. He goes, no, I'm not. So, of course, I had to go check that out, and there I was. So I called my pastor back in California and said, hey, we need to go back to servants for Christ so that it says Jesus on our back, and they know that we're all, we were still serving Jesus 100 mile an hour, but how many of you know different things that you see, people perceive different? So when you walked in here, you thought, especially if the, uh, the motorcycles were still, you're thinking, what did Pastor Bruce bring to church today? <laughs> he brought us. <laughs> anyway, praise God and pass the pizza. It's all good stuff. So part of our thing is we have a pledge that we say all the time. And uh, again, we're, we really are not your mama's church. We, we do things. We're all Jesus. It's all about Jesus, but we do things a little bit crazy sometimes. And we'll go places that people think we're insane. And, uh, but I always ask people, where did Jesus go? Everybody's always blaming him for hanging out with sinners. Now, I'm not saying you need to hang out with sinners, but you know what? We call it drive-bys. <laughs> you got a group of people somewhere that are not saved and big party going on. You know what? Why not do a drive-by? What, what a, what's a drive-by? You just pull in there, welcome, hey, how's it going? God bless you. And just show your presence. And if Jesus, here's the two-letter cuss word, if Jesus is living in you, guess what? You just brought Jesus to the party. Hello? Come on. So don't be f afraid to go to some heathen stuff. The heathens need us. They don't really need us, they need Jesus, but we're the, we're the instrument that's coming in there. And just bless on them, love them, and then say, hey, God, before everything gets out of control, God bless you, see ya. Amen? So our pledge is, I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed, I have Holy Spirit power, the die has been cast, I've stepped over the line, the decision has been made, I am a disciple of Jesus. 
I won't look back or let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed, my present makes sense, my future is secure, I'm finished and done with low living, sight walking, cheap giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions, or popularity. I don't have to be right, recognized, praised, regarded, or recorded. I live by faith, walk by patience. My face is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my road is rough, my companions are few. My guide is reliable, my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, hired away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice or hesitate in the presence of the enemy. I will not give up, shut up, let up until I've stayed up, prayed up. I will give till I drop, preach till all know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes, my banner will be clear. Amen? So again, we're not your mama's church, and it's kind of based off of Matthew 4, 19 and 20, which says, and he said, Jesus said, follow me as my disciples, accepting me as your master and teacher, and walking the same path of life that I walk, and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus will. And immediately they left their nets and followed him, becoming his disciples, believing and trusting in him, and following his example. What better way to show people out there, in fact, I was said in the first service, we have a sign kind of like yours that says you're now entering the mission field when you're leaving the church. How many of you know church is awesome? Amen. What a great, praise and worship is awesome. You got a great crew. But you know what? This, I call it, a, this is party time for us. We all get together, fellowship, hang out. And you need to be here because somebody might be going through some stuff and they might need an encouragement. Somebody might be screwing up and need us a little kick. Anybody ever been there before? That's what the body of Christ is all about. The, the church is not this building. The church is us. And we need each other. Amen? Amen? So our mission statement is set for his mission is to reach people most churches will not touch. The drunks, drug addicts, prostitutes, homosexuals, homeless, and those less fortunate. To give those people an opportunity to help themselves, we are here to Give them a hand up, not a hand out. Through our live-in discipleship home, we want to get people back into the working force of America through classes, studies, physical labor, and being around people who love them. We want to see good citizens come out of our set-free discipleship home. Set-free also wants to minister to those on the streets who will not come into a building by taking food to them, to those in jail who have no hope, and to reach the kids and youth now. We want to reach them before they get messed up with drugs, alcohol, promiscuous sex, or gangs, and to love those who think they're unlovable. So those of you that are saved, I want you to think about this. Think about it before you got saved. Anybody remember what a big dirt bag you were before you got saved? <laughs> Come on. Now some of you little sanctimonious holy people are thinking, oh, I was never a dirt bag. Yeah, you were. <laughs> You know why you were is because you didn't have Jesus. You were serving somebody else. I'd be crying too. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Say, one of my, I love to say this, tell the truth, shame the devil. If things are not going right in your life, you've got a great pastor here. And there's some things going on around this church. I'm watching the discipleship stuff, the, the what's your small group thing called? Life groups going on. You got a lot of stuff happening around here. If you're going through it, don't let the devil shame you and guilt you and trouble you and say they don't want you back here. Because that's the biggest lie ever. When we're screwing up, he gets us out of church, he gets us out of fellowship, and then it's all about, no, don't go back there. They're all going to know what you did. They already know what you did. <laughs> Hello? Everybody knows, just come back. Repent. Come back and watch this crew wrap its arms around you. And I got, a, uh, got off track, and I do that a lot. So I need to get back on track here. Bruce wanted me to tell you what, the how, the why, the what, everything about us. So Set Free was established in 1982 in Anaheim, California by my pastor, Pastor Phil Aguilar. And I brought Set Free to Montana in 1995. Since then, we got Set Free's in Lolo, Missoula, Helena, Townsend, Haver, Hardin, we got a racer's church in Billings and in Great Falls. 
We have a church in Sturgis, South Dakota. And the cool thing about that is one of our discipleship guys, he, was, he actually came out of the mountains. Came, we had, what, what's Anvil's thing called? Spoken, spoken word. We do a thing called spoken word up in Lolo. He came out of the mountains, went to the bar to get something to drink, and one of our guys had showed up there to get a cup of coffee before coming to spoken word and invited him to come to spoken word. The dude got saved, he came to the program, was with me for three years, actually four years. He's now the pastor in Sturgis, South Dakota. God can do anything he wants to do. Mikey's just amazing. We got him in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Turlock, California, Belmont, North Carolina, Mount Vernon, Ohio, and we're getting ready to start one in Browning, Montana. Here on Tuesday, we're getting ready to take a big bunch of food and get ready to start up there. And Steve reminded me that we got a guy in Ukraine, Val, who showed up at Sturgis with us last year, and he's trying to get a motorcycle ministry going in the Ukraine. So God's crazy. I just love it. <laughs> and if you think he's the most sanctimonious, holy, pious, oh, Father God. You ever read this? Anybody read this book? Ever see what he did? How many of you have watched The Passion? Yeah. Or not The Passion. What's the, the, huh? The Chosen. There you go. Anybody been watching The Chosen? Man, if you haven't watched that, whoo, it's some awesome stuff. Jesus is crazy. He loves people. And he loves people like me. Woo! And if he loves somebody like me, he loves you. Amen? Amen? Get excited about Jesus Christ. It's fun. If you're having a, I don't want to serve Jesus because it's just boring. Maybe you need to get saved. Hello? Because if you're walking with the creator of the universe and you've got Holy Spirit power living in you, woo, anyway, praise God. We also have a Native, Native American ministry with Pastor Bruce Plummer from Fort Belknap, uh, Fry Bread Ministry, and I love Pastor Bruce talking about Israel. We support a church in Bethlehem and HLM Ministries, and I was just telling the other service, I just talked to, we got a lot of friends in Israel, just talked to one of our guys in Haifa, which is in northern Israel. Hamas just doesn't have these little rockets anymore. In fact, if you'd know, a lot of the rockets that they're shooting from Hamas, they don't even make it out of Gaza. That's how great the rocket system is. But they have some new ones. Haifa's in northern Israel, and when I called Andre the other day, they were just coming out of the bomb shelters because they had just had alert. I get alerts on my phone um, when a rocket's launched over there. And my wife thought I had a new video game on my phone the other day because it was going bloop, bloop, bloop. I mean, they were just, they were just coming 100 mile an hour at them. God loves Israel. I believe his hand, out of all those rockets that have been fired over there, it might be different now, but the other day when I was, yesterday when I was looking, there's only been nine Israeli killed. Nine. Out of 2,500 rockets, fire, nine people have been killed. How is that possible? God. Amen? All right. I got to keep telling you about us. We've been in our present location for seven years. We were homeless for five years after a fire in a building in 2009. And if you, in the video, that's the building that we had downtown Great Falls. And in 2009 on Memorial Day weekend, the night before my youngest daughter graduated from high school, the place caught on fire and didn't burn to the ground because it's a, it's a wonderful structure, but the whole inside was gutted and uh, just a whole bunch of things went on there. So we were homeless for about five years, and First Baptist Church, which was a block and a half away from, the, from us, invited us in. We spent five years Saturday night there. Um, sometimes we couldn't go. They had weddings, funerals, different things going on on Saturday night. We actually had church at a gym, not a gymnasium, but an actual working out gym. Hey, go wherever God leads you. You can have church... We got a guy in, in uh, where's free on that? Belmont, North Carolina. They do church. It's called uh, 
Barstool Church. They actually do church in the bar, start at 10. At noon, they start serving beer, and they get to share Jesus in that bar. You say, what? Absolutely. I really believe Jesus would be bellied right up there, not drinking and partying with them, but he'd be right up there sharing the gospel, how to get saved. God's probably calling some of you guys and gals to go into certain areas where nobody else will go. And you're thinking, I can't go there. Yeah, you can. If the Spirit of the Lord's leading you to go somewhere that you think you're not supposed to go, you know what? I would come and I would talk to him for a second. Pastor, I just think God's calling me to wherever. I'd almost guarantee he's not going to say, oh, don't do that. I'm almost going to guarantee he's going to say, let me pray for you and get going. He might, do, he might not do that, but he's going to give you the encouragement to get out there and do the ministry Jesus Christ has called you to do. So anyway, we, we purchased, uh, here's a whole other God thing. I can't get into that because I don't have the time. Another building right down the street from us, the uh, location we're in now, we, God's, we're totally debt free. Everything we have, we're all paid off. We don't owe anybody anything. God just keeps blessing us all the time and even during that time when we were we were uh out of the building because of the fire our bread of life ministry which is our food ministry which goes seven days a week the day after the fire um one of the bars downtown invited us in and we hauled all the food into the bar and our food ministry was actually operating out of the bar downtown great falls montana when people see what you're doing even if they don't believe in jesus they'll still respect you. They might not agree with you, but they're still going to respect what you're doing if you're helping people. And what's Jesus' whole purpose? Bringing people into the kingdom, right? So anyway, uh, our food truck picks up, delivers food 363 days of the year. In 2020, we gave out, delivered around 585,000 pounds of food. And so far this year, we've touched 3,721 families, and delivered over 206,000 pounds of food. And so we go to different places. We go to, Vaughan. if you don't know these little towns, some of these towns are around Great Falls and in Cascade County. We go to Vaughn. We deliver to the Church of the Nazarene. We go to a low-income housing area. Tuesday, we're starting in Browning. I'm excited about that. We go to a place called Living Grace Church. We go to Carter, Fort Shaw, Fort Belknap, Fort Benton. Uh, and we deliver to a Vineyard Christian Fellowship and they box up stuff and give food out. So it's not just us. It's all these guys working hand in hand with the rescue mission, Salvation Army, the food bank. We all work together, and man, we feed a bunch of people. And it's just fun to go. And I tell my guys in the program all the time, if I could quit being the pastor, and sometimes, Sometimes I want to quit. I don't know about you, but sometimes things get crazy and you just say, you know what, bag this, God, I'm done. <laughs> Which wouldn't work out very well for any of us pastors, but I tell them, I, if I could just do one thing in the ministry, it would be to drive that food truck. Because where can you go when you pull up, people are waiting for you, and they're excited to see you. There's nobody in there cussing, yelling, throwing stuff at you. They're like, what do you got? Not only you got food for them, but you can share the love of Jesus Christ with them too. Amen. What time did you say I got to quit? <laughs> Quarter till. Quarter till. Okay. I'm doing all right, I think. Maybe. <laughs> One of our main ministries is our in-house discipleship program, and it's a men's ministry. These guys live, work, play in the ministry 24-7, 365. It's for a whole year. Um, they don't work outside the ministry. Everything's done in the ministry. We have a house they live at the house, um, they drive the food truck, they maintain a house, they work, clean up the church, uh, they do security, they mow lawns, they shovel snow, they help in our clothing room, they're involved in anger management and recovery classes, Bible studies, they cook for fry bread, uh, they cook for our Saturday night feeds, they do devotions every day with me for an hour and a half, and I like to say it's not a re rehab home, it's a one-step Jesus program. It's all about 
Jesus Christ. Amen? One of our graduates, I told you that, Pastor Mike, is, a, is the pastor now in Sturgis, South Dakota. And then I have another guy who's been with me for three years. Actually, he was with me, took off, came back, took off, and now he's been with me for three solid years. He's now the overseer of our program. And uh, in fact, right now, they just got done cleaning the racetrack up at Electric City Speedway. That's Pastor Steve hired them to, they come up there and clean the racetrack. So we're kind of all over the place trying to minister to some people. Twice a week we have a free clothing room. All our items are donated, so we just, they come in, get a bag, they can take as much as they want. And the cool, really cool thing about it, and I said it in the video too, is a lot of people give us their clothes because we don't charge. And so they'll donate, and we get to bless a bunch of people every once in a while. We'll take the uh, a trailer load of clothes up to the reservation and bless those guys. So it's not just inside. We want to be outside as much as we can. We have a great men's and women's Bible study. Pastor Cowboy and his wife Beth run that. My son-in-law does prison ministries. Uh, we have an ASL sign language class going. It's not going on right now. They kind of quit because of covid Hopefully we get that back going again, too. Uh, we have a great kids' ministry, uh, and off of that, the crew has a ministry called Hope Falls Ranch, and it's a horse-assisted learning place for kids, safe place where the herding can find hope and healing with interactions with horses and loving mentors all centered around Jesus. This is one of the coolest ministries is to get some little kid that's whether because of abuse or whatever's going on in their, in their life, are just locked up, they won't talk, they won't do anything. Take them out and let a horse start loving on them. Let them lead that horse around, let them brush that horse, let them do some stuff with the horses, and watch those kids start to, watch that shell start to break and open, open up. And it's awesome with that. When we do some big block parties where we, set up the jump houses outside and do popcorn and whatever else and just invite everybody in the neighborhood around and just hang out and have some fun. And I've told the first service, they're probably done by now, but the kids are actually doing an outreach at New Life Church in Conrad, helping their kids ministry get started. I mean, really excited about that because my daughter's the kids ministry up there and uh, she invited them all up there. So they're up there doing a big puppet show and all the stuff that the kids do and getting rocking and rolling and uh, just some fun, fun stuff. Amen? And so our Servants for Christ motorcycle ministry stuff. Um, how many of you noticed the motorcycles when you first came in? Anybody miss the motorcycles when you first came in? A couple of you did? You must have been looking at your phones. <laughs> Texting somebody. Motorcycles are one of the greatest draws for people that there is. People pull up on a motorcycle. I'll guarantee you, if a motorcycle's running, somebody's going to look to see what's going on. And the greatest thing is it's a kid magnet. Motorcycles are kid magnets. I've watched, I don't know how many times, kids trying to pull mothers over towards us. And moms are going, oh. The kid usually wins. You know, invite them over, put them on the motorcycle, start the bike up, let them, you know, let them play with that. Everybody tells us those are some awful expensive toys. They're not toys, they're tools. And yes, they are expensive. But God uses those to reach and touch other people. There's, you can open up a conversation on anything. You know, how's the day? What's going on? Where are you from? And just basic loving on people, interacting with people. We don't try and shove Jesus down their throat. We try to build a relationship with them, just to even getting to know them. And, I mean, we, we got Jesus on our back. They know what we stand for. And if God gives us the opportunity, I call it a divine appointment, if God gives us the opportunity to share the gospel with them, boom, there you go. But if not, guess what? You planted a seed. And some people plant seeds, other people water, and other people harvest. So anyway, it's fun. We love to do that stuff. We work and minister in the 1% outlaw world with the clubs and their support clubs, independents. Um, 
we will do their funerals for them. We'll marry them, uh, help in any way we can. I've, I said in the first service, I, I've limited what I do on weddings anymore. You got to go through, you got to really jump through hoops for me to marry you anymore. Church has the same divorce rate as the world does. If you're going to get married, you better make doggone sure that's a lifetime mate. I won't, never mind. <laughs> but I've got one exception. If anybody from that world calls and says, will you marry us? I'll be there in two seconds. Where are we doing it? What's happening? Uh, in fact, last year during the Red Lodge rally, I did a, a Facebook Live with one of the crew. They were in Florida on the beach, and I was in Red Lodge, Montana at the rally, and we married them over Facebook, which was really cool. And then they came back, and they had a big party when they got back. But it's all about... Loving people right where they're at and not condemning them. Does that mean I agree with their lifestyle? No, not all the time. There's a lot of people that are living in sin I don't agree with, but you know what? Jesus still loves those people. Yeah. And we got to reach, reach out that loving, loving hand and just say, you know, you're welcome. How else are they going to get to know Jesus? I got a friend of mine who hates an awful word. But I really do believe he hates Muslims. And I keep telling him, man, I got some great Muslim friends in Israel. What? They're trying to kill you. They're trying to... Not these two dudes. They just love us all the time. How are the Muslim world going to know about Jesus if it isn't for a Christian to show up with the love of Jesus to give it to them? One of the really cool things that's happening in the Muslim world is they're coming to Jesus right and left. And it's not because of this crew. It's because Jesus is showing up in their dreams. Whew, I get goosebumps all over me here. They're coming, Jesus is showing up and telling them, and then guess what he does? He leads them to somebody right here that's got a Bible for them, we'll mentor them, we'll school them, and show them everything that's going on. Guess what? That's your job. Jesus takes care of it. We just get to have fun with them. Amen? I'm running out of time. So we're neutral, so we can touch all the different clubs. We do bike blessings. We work the gate and trash at the, uh, the hill climbs down in Columbus. We run the campground down at the Beartooth Rally in Red Lodge. We have a booth in downtown Sturgis during the rally. We hold services in the evening at the church down there. We do barbecues and just have fun with that. And uh, that's kind of how our church of Lolo got started, and I'm not going to go into that. Actually, I'm going to let Pastor Cowboy jump up here and... Uh, just share a little quick testimony. I think you'll make it here. <laughs> wow, five minutes. Okay, ready. <laughs> so, <laughs> Set Free is an amazing attractor. Pastor JT read that pledge. Uh, we read that every, every day or every service. Right before services, we read that. And that used to be kind of date myself here. That used to be on, it wasn't a web page, but it was the bulletin board. But that used to be on their bulletin board, and I read that, and I was just like, oh my Lord, that's me. And I met these guys, I met the servants, uh, I was a motorcycle rider, um, I was invited to a motorcycle bike blessing in 2006 in Helena. Uh, I showed up with another man who is now the pastor of the Helena Church. We showed up together. Um, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I met Pastor JT, uh, now Pastor Anvil, and a bunch of the crew at that time. And then we were invited to the next weekend was Easter in Great Falls. And at that time, we used to, um, Eastern Great Falls, uh, because we were having services on the Sunday and we used to feed after services. We fed in Gibson Park and then we had our big Easter egg hunt. And I'm watching all this going on. I'm watching this feed going on. I'm watching people come through the line. And at that time, we're talking four or 500 people come through that food line in the park. And I watched God supply all that. 
It was amazing. And Set Free, in what I saw, is Set Free Ministries is a what I want to call a faith-based ministry. <laughs> we are not your mama's church. I want to call it, please don't take offense to this, but I'm, I want to call it, we're not your white bread church. <laughs> because you could be sitting beside, in a Saturday service in Great Falls, you could be sitting beside somebody that owns a business, a prominent business owner, on one side of you, and on the other side of you is somebody that just puked on themselves or wet themselves. That's our service on Saturday night. It's pretty wild. <laughs> we call it Welcome to Set Free. <laughs> but I enjoy it. I enjoy serving. It's an amazing blessing. It's all about getting out of self and sharing the love of Jesus Christ. I got two minutes. You going to finish up here or you want me to finish? You can do it. All right. So I came on with Set Free in 2006, right after this bike blessing, which I had never been to before <laughs> and never even followed Jesus before, to an Easter egg hunt and a feed. And the next thing I know, I'm signing up for pastoral training. <laughs> <laughs> and thank God is so groovy. I just love that. Does anybody know, you know, anywhere know where the word groovy came from? I use that word all the time. We talk about the motorcycles being a tool. Groovy is my evangelistic tool. I say that word all the time. It's my new Jesus word. Groovy came from the music industry out of the 60s and late, or early 70s. It's a term that DJs used for when they, well, this is kind of dating myself too, when they actually had records. And as the DJ put the needle down on the record, if the needle stayed in the groove, the music sounded the sweetest, sounded the best, right? If that, had, that record had any dance or scratches or anything, that needle's hopping around and the music didn't sound so good. <clears throat> I use that word now when people ask me about that word. I explain that definition, but I say now, because of set free, and I've been set free by Jesus Christ, I now use that word because... I know I have to stay in the groove. If I get out of that groove in any way, things aren't very sweet. Things get bad. So I stay in the groove. That's my word, groovy. But Set Freeze truly has been a, a blessing to me. Um, man, I can just keep going on here, but uh, uh, I have an amazing wife now um, due to Set Free Ministries. Um, I had lost my uh, dad in uh, 1999, um, and I used to, just real quick, part of my testimony, I used to go up to what we used to call um, <clears throat> Kimber Gulch, where we hunted all the time, and uh, I was going up there on his birthday, which was February 11th, and I used to go up and I used to take a bottle of Jack Daniels, and I used to go up on his birthday and celebrate his birthday looking out over the area that we hunted. And while I was up there one day, so this, is, this went on for like two to three years. I was up there and I'm getting ready to, I've got the cap off this bottle of Jack Daniels. I'm getting ready to drink this bottle up there in celebration for my dad's birthday and I hear someone say, you're not alone. And just like Pastor JT explained in the first service, I'm looking around, there's nobody there. And I heard it again, you're not alone. I put the cap back on that bottle, put it back in my backpack, walked off that mountain, and never have taken a drop of alcohol since. Amen. <clears throat> but that's... And then putting my hope and trust in Jesus Christ. But I was a fence rider for years. I tell everybody I, I'm, I'm surprised I'm not cut in half. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I have now stepped over onto a beautiful side of that fence. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good job, dude. There you go, sir. Let's give him a good hand. Amen.
it's a blessing to be able to see ministry taking place in an unorthodox way that you and I maybe wouldn't do. But thank God for the fact that God has touched people's lives uniquely to reach people in a unique way. And that's uh, such a blessing. So we're glad to be able to support them and help them. And we're going to take a love offering as you're leaving. And all the money goes to the Set Free Ministry. And everybody can give something. I hope that you'll do that to say we want to be a blessing to you and, and give something to say thank you for being here, taking some time out, come all the way over here, and uh, bless our church. Let's, uh, let's bow our heads in prayer. <clears throat> You know, today, I want you to know Jesus never makes a mistake in bringing you to church. And the message is clear. It's not a religion that we teach. It is a relationship. And Jesus wants to come into your life and make you new. He's the only one that can do that. Religion cannot do that. And so today, if you're here and you do not know Jesus as your Savior, we invite you to take that step and say yes to him. Many of you know Jesus as your Savior, but you, like Cowboy said, have been on the fence. You're not really involved. You haven't left completely, but you're really not doing anything for the kingdom. And so maybe today the Spirit of God is saying to you, hey, it's time to get out of the grandstands and onto the field and become a player and have your life come alive in the meaning of serving the Lord and find significance in something that's eternal. And so we invite you to take a step toward Crosspoint. We'd love to get to know you better and help you develop a ministry that God's calling you to. My Father, I thank you for this time. Thank you that you take broken lives and mend them and put them back together. And then you make something wonderful out of their life. And Lord, only your grace can do that. And we give you all the credit. Lord, we thank you that you have brought people together that are like-minded, that have heart for you that want to stand on the principles of scripture and you bring people here every Sunday that are trying to figure it out and they're just wondering about um, who Jesus is and if he's real and should we take a step in this way and so Lord I just pray that you would in, in the way that you always do take the message of the love of Christ and help them move towards you So bless us, and we'll thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Let's stand to our feet as she leads us.